Hi, greetings from the spine department of Narayana Health City Orthopedics Spine and Trauma Care Center. We're going to discuss about spinal infections. Spinal infections are uh, a common entity in our practice. Uh, by spinal infection, I mean infections that happen in the bones or in the disc, the, the tissue that is there between the two bones of the back. 50 to 20 years back, spinal infections, especially tuberculosis of the spine was quite common. But as you know, things have changed in our country, a uh, lot of sanitation issues have been addressed, a lot of things have been addressed. The healthcare itself uh, has grown up tremendously. And we are not seeing so much of tuberculosis in the spine, although I would not say that it's still a very common problem in our country. Uh, but uh, I would say that along with tuberculosis of the spine, we are also seeing other infections in the spine. The, the COVID wave that just went by um, uh, has also put people you know, in an immunocompromised state that their immunity has gone down because of multiple reasons, maybe because of the treatment or because of the, of the infection itself. And whenever the immunity of a person goes down, the possibility of infection in the spine goes up. So an infection in the spine you know, typically presents with some very uh, interesting symptoms. They will come with back pain, which is most often in the middle back. It can be in the lower back or the upper back, but the middle back is one which is more common. And the pain pattern is a little different from other issues. The pain is usually more in the night. There is difficulty in sleeping in the night. They may be very good in the daytime, but the pain is more in the night. And of course, along with pain, they can have fever, they can have sweating, night sweats especially, and the fever typically may come in the evenings only. And also, they may have difficulty in moving. Whenever they turn on the bed, there is a lot of pain. Whenever they get up from the bed, every movement in the spine creates a lot of pain. And this pain pattern is quite typical for spinal infections. And they also might have other symptoms like loss of weight. They may have loss of appetite. They may not be feeling uh, hungry. So these symptoms, whenever they are associated with back pain, we start suspecting that there could be a spinal infection. So how do we deal with it when they come to a spine surgeon? So when they come to us, we evaluate them thoroughly. We do an examination of the spine. We look at how if they have any um, uh, weakness in their legs. And there are some uh, tests that we order, some blood tests to look for any spinal infection. And then we also do an MRI of the spine, which is uh, highly specific and sensitive to pick up even milder kinds of infection that are there in the spine. Once there is a, a diagnosis of spinal infection, uh, the decision basically depends on, again, the same uh, issues that how much disability that is there. If they are having a lot of pain and, and of course, if there is any weakness in the legs, then it becomes an indication to operate them. The surgery itself gives an opportunity to clean the infection physically. You wash that area up and you fill up that area with bone graft like how we have shown here and we put screw and rod and stabilize it. But yes, tuberculosis of the spine especially and other infections also can be managed conservatively. That is without surgery. If the infection is in the early stage, if there is not much of destruction of the bone, we can manage them conservatively. We give them a brace. We put them on appropriate antibiotics. And the choice of the antibiotic most of the time depends on one test that we do. That is an aspiration and biopsy. It's an OPD procedure. Whenever the patient comes in, we put a needle, aspirate the pus or the tissue which is infected. We send it to a culture, to the microbiologist. They can grow the bug which is causing the infection. And depending on which bug we have grown, and we look at the sensitivity, which antibiotic does it respond to. We give a prolonged course of antibiotic and it helps in healing of the infection. I would like to tell you that tuberculosis especially requires a longer treatment, like maybe about nine months to one year, whereas other bacterial infections require about three months of treatment.